Miami Hurricane song, Paul, wholesome one. Woo! You family, it's good to be back. Our Wi-Fi is working for me. <laughs> and it should be running for everyone else. Let me know if your audio is out. We're going to start off, we're going to hand it off with the popular topic, but there's some interesting news that came up post-scrimmage and some comments that Diaz has made today with the quarterback situations. I know all you're dying and nagging, to, oh, who's going to be the quarterback? So, wholesome. Throw us your thoughts there. You go first. Quarterback. Um, the most important position in sports. Um, it's, a, it's a little weird because for the first time in 15 years, the University of Miami has three quality quarterbacks. Yeah. And we have an offensive coordinator that's willing to put his around it differently, um, mixed with different talent around that quarterback. Because I also think that whoever's the starting quarterback – is going to actually lead into who's our starters around them also. Uh, I believe if Jaron mm -hmm. Williams were to become the starter, which we're going to talk about because he's been having a pretty good couple of practices, I think mm -hmm. we'll focus more on having really good pass protectors out there at the offensive line. Um, you know, if Tate Martell's out there, we'll probably have more of our maulers because we're going to be moving fast. We'll have our more athletic offensive line, people that can pull, people that can get to the second level because we'll have an athletic quarterback. And then I think with Kosey, it'll be uh, run heavy with a mixture of deep passing also. So I think that's when we'll have our big maulers in the game uh, at offensive line. Um, we can go across the board and see production and some pretty good evaluation and development out of all three of these quarterbacks. I mean, I was only able to catch one practice. You guys haven't been able to make a practice because of traveling – you know, type of thing. Right. But at the end of the day, all of our quarterbacks have shown some flashes. Yeah. It's more about consistency is who's going to be the starter and then who needs this job. Who's going to take it by the horns? Um, let's start off with the guy who's been doing well as of late, Jaron Williams. Yes, sir. Personally, I've warmed up to him as being the starter. Um, there I've had you go. There we go. And I've thought about it, and I'm like, okay, well, if they trust him to go out there, and I truly, truly trust whoever I start, our starting quarterback, because I feel like Dan Enos isn't going to put somebody out there that's going to make it, us look bad. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's vying for a head coaching job. Manny Diaz yeah. calls us the new Miami. It's just so much off season hype. They're going to put the guy out there that's going to put us in the best. Situation. Mm -hmm. Jaron showing up the last yep. couple of practice. One thing about what that is going to do, it's going to force everyone else to rise up. Yes. So let's yeah. say all three are somewhat similar, right? And Jaron has had the last couple of good days. And the Kosi Perry to rise up to meet or exceed what Jaron has already done in order to really vow to be the starter. Right. So Having a good practice or two, I'm not going to get mad and say, you know, F this guy. No, no, not having those good practices. That made everybody else get better. Kosey was doing well for like three or four practices, and now Williams has taken over the last two. So that shows me that all three quarterbacks want to get better and are doing the things necessary to get better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, I probably covered a lot all at one time, but Paul, you can go ahead and, and, and give your opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you said it perfectly, wholesome one. I agree 100% with everything you said. Just to touch up from there, um, you know, it really is truly incredible. The 180 Coach Enos has done with yeah. his quarterback position. Um, Coach Manny Diaz, the first thing he said when he sat down the press conference, when he was hired, he said, we need to change the culture in the quarterback room. And it's, I mean, compare from last season, Cade Walden, Malik Rozier, Nikosi Perry. God. Look at it this season. Nikosi Perry, much improved. It's like a complete 180, like we mentioned last night in Category 5 show. Jaron Williams as well has improved incredibly, not only as a player, but as a leader as well. He's really taking command of the huddle while in scrimmages and in practice. He's someone you can count on during games. And then Tate Martell. He came in the spring kind of looking like a lost puppy at some point in the spring. Yeah. He comes in the fall and has improved greatly. Now I still he has I still think he he uh 
has not improved to the point where he's catching up to Nikosi Perry and Jaron Williams. I think the quarterback who's improved the most besides Nikosi Perry is Jaron Williams. Uh, man, he's he's looking better and better as we get closer to August 24th. Um, he was dropping dimes all day in practice today, according to Kane's Insight, that had people there on site. Um, the only thing I'm nervous about Jaron Williams, if he gets the nod come August 24th, it's very easy to play very well in a comfortable environment against the same players every day yeah but can you play well in a sold out crowd where you can't hear the plays okay you don't know what's going on you get hit in the face smacked in the mouth maybe you have a light concussion how do you bounce back you know in the real game there's a quote i forgot what boxer said everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face i think it was mike tyson yeah nicosi perry has the game experience He's won in Blacksburg, Virginia. He's beaten Florida State. If Jaron Williams gets the nod, which it looks like a Perry and Jaron Williams battle, how will he settle in game one against Florida? Because that is a must-win game. That is our Super Bowl. That's what I want to see from Jaron Williams. If he does get the nod, how is he going to react to a tough environment, a big game? I know how Nikosi Perry can play because he's been in those big games. He's proven to me. How can Jaron Williams perform? So we'll see what happens, guys. I just want to say, I can't say I told you so yet because he's not named starter. But the one eight of the conversation that we have had, and now Tate is in third place, and my boy is moving to second, okay? Yeah. He didn't break moving the start. On. He's out there balling. But, you know, this is not to discredit any of the quarterbacks at all. It's just saying the competition is ramping up. It means third string. Is going to be really, really freaking good to the point that you thought he might be first string as well. And that's great to see in competition for Miami for the first time. Because honestly, we didn't think that Cade Wilden had a chance when he was there. Much respect to him. But, you know, it was not a competitive battle there with Rick in the quarterback position. Absolutely. With, you know, Rozier, it was kind of like, oh, it's your job. You know, it was already given. I don't think he really outbeat Perry. Perry was just kind of thrown on there unprepared. He didn't have a quarterback coach to use his skill sets and – tweak them the way that he needed to. And he's just the high school player playing against college level athleticism with no good, you know, quarterbacks coach. Dan Enos comes in. Every single guy on that mold is just balling, just balling. And Jared as well. And the other thing is I caught in the video, he was running again in the scrimmage. We don't see any stats from all that. We don't know how much he ran, but he ran. And I'm just hyped to see him. Running yeah. around outside of the pocket, first of all, like you said, adversity. But he knows what he needs to do. And, like, Tate and Perry, we kept talking about, oh, they can run. Uh, you know, Jaron can't. But Jaron can run, and he's been working at it. So I'm really yeah. excited to see where that's going on, guys. And, you know, hats off to him if he wins first or anyone else. But, like, this is just very exciting. But I want to hear your guys' opinion. Now, uh, Diaz was talking to him today. And they asked him if he's going to name a starter or not prior to the Gators game. And he's not sure about it yet. Kind of how we do. Right. They might go one way or another. Do you think this late into fall camp, we should keep it a secret or not? Absolutely. I think so. I think it's – remember, Florida doesn't really have game tape on Jaron Williams at all. And a Dan Eno's offense on top of it. They're going to have to look back at clips that maybe – there's a similar quarterback with the same profile under Coach Enos. Yet again, he can literally completely change his offense because he's a very dynamic play caller. He's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve. They have not seen Tate Martell really a lot. They can look back at Ohio State, but never with Dan Enos as his offensive coordinator. You know, they have game film on Nikosi Perry, but still not as Dan Enos as his offensive coordinator. They've had it as a um, John Ricks quarterback's coach with a very boring, vanilla Mark Rick offense. That's not what Dan Enos has. Top it off with the amount of talent we have on offense, it's a very, very tough task to get prepared for this kind of game. It kind of reminds me of Miami's position when LSU didn't have a quarterback and Joe Burrow was coming in. They didn't really know what to expect from Joe Burrow. Didn't get a lot of playing time at Ohio State. Now it comes into LSU, different offense. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you work out of? You know, what, what game film do you take notes out of? You know, it, it's tough. So I think it puts Florida in a very dangerous spot. Yeah, yeah. Wholesome, what do you think? 
I know for a fact, like I say, every single time this conversation comes up, um, the most the most difficult thing uh, as a defensive coach and as a defensive coordinator is uh, in getting that preparation and the knowledge to your play, execute the preparation and the game plan, okay? If you have to game plan for more than one quarterback is an issue. If you have to game three quarterbacks is an issue issue and also understand that that these are dollars to also run no one knows yes. what they will have to do. okay for jaron williams will run more of that arkansas type of offense that he ran but you can go back to his days at alabama and say okay for, yes, sir for, see we might they might run off that alabama for Cozy. for tate martell you don't know you have to look at high school film for 10 plays, you know, Rutgers for Ohio State. Uh, so it, it forces the coaches to have to to walk through three different forms of offense that they have to prepare for. Make a game plan for three different quarterbacks. And that takes time out of the periods that you have out of 22 a day. That takes time out of film preparation and walkthroughs for three different quarterbacks. But it's just based on the uh, talent that we have on the team. We can come out in 12, mm -hmm. we can come out in 11, we can come out in 10, we can come out in 22 and be successful across the board with all those different uh, uh, formations. And that's not even speaking about whether we have a slot on the field, whether that slot is a tight end, whether there's double tight, because with 12 personnel, you can. 12 personnel could mean in line, such as an ace. It could mean one tight end um, uh, online and then one at slot. You could even have uh, 12 personnel with an H back. So it could get real fancy based on the, the type of uh, um, personnel that we have. So I think that it matters that we um, – are we still live? Because it's going in and out of YouTube. Yes, okay, yes, you're, you're, good. Okay. you're good, yeah. Yeah, um, it, it matters, it matters. And I think that he should wait until the very first offensive snap. Now, that means publicly. Now, internally, I believe it's important yeah. to convey the message to who is the starter, who's third and who's okay. second, okay? Definitely. Because there's... There's a confidence in this. There's the personnel that's around the player that needs to be harder because all three quarterbacks throw the ball slightly different, which is why Tate Martell is having issues because he had to learn how to even grip a ball all the way they him to grip the ball. Right. You know, here playing, you know, play ball and just go out there and make a play like he did as a 48 and a old quarterback. Jaron Williams is the one to transition because he just he according to Danny, you know, he had all the intangibles uh that he wanted when he first came in. Now it's a big confidence level with him. Yeah. Has his mechanics that he had to work on. Jaron Williams had um the confidence issues, and the Kosi Perry has the consistency issues. All three quarterbacks have something to work on, and from what I've watched and from what all of us can talk about, because we haven't been at practice, all three guys have worked on them and have flashed at different times in practice. And to me, that creates a competition level that we truly, truly need. What do you guys think about Diaz's comments on Harley and then our – Good old running back DJ. Like, that came down as a very big surprise to me coming out of scrimmage. I guess DJ was a less of a surprise with the Harris injury. To all those right. who don't know in the chat, he was seen with a brace on today, but he was, you know, moving around. It doesn't seem like – I think it's precautionary at this point. Uh, but uh, DJ had his card, you know, pulled, and he played well as far as I heard. Did he yeah. fumble? I, don't, I didn't hear any reports of him fumbling. Not that I have heard of. He did not fumble the ball. Uh, but yeah, that was huge. DJ, you can tell he really just stepped up his game. You know, ever since that incident in practice where coaches got on him, I, from what I've seen, that's probably the first time I've really seen coaches get in his face since he's been at Miami, mm -hmm. um, to that extent that I saw the video of. 
Uh, but that, yeah, he truly did step up his game. And Mike Harley, like Robert Burns as well, has been a pleasant surprise. I remember talking on this show regarding Mike Harley, whether he was going to step up or not this year, whether he should have been offered by Miami because he's against FIU. He was catching every ball left and right. And then other games, he was got off. Like, don't even put him on the field. He was that bad. Now the fact that we can utilize him at the slot, maybe when KJ Osborne is tired, is gassed out, we can put him back in the slot, replace KJ Osborne, it's going to be a great mix. I think that's his perfect position. I think we're going to utilize him to his skill set. I'm excited. Based on the, the information that has been bought to us. Oh, oh, go ahead for the $2 donation. Go ahead, Anton. Oh, yeah, Buddy Woodward with a $2 donation saying, yes, let's Gators practice for all three quarterbacks. And, <laughs> yeah, let them waste their times. Exactly. That's definitely the strategy that we all want to see, not be prepared. And that's the advantage that we have. New head coach, but you don't know what to expect. You don't know the game plan. And uh, Dan Mullen, I mean, Diaz worked with him. He knows this guy really, really well, and he can prepare for him pretty well. And and one more thing. Sorry, wholesome one. 95 people in the chat already 16 minutes in, man. Like, that's huge. Oh, that my is gosh. outstanding. That, I didn't expect Ooh. that tonight. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it, man. Um, without you guys, we couldn't make the show possible. Yeah, yeah, huge shout out, and there's just thousands of comments that are going through. Everyone's loving the Category 5 show yesterday. Um, big shout out to Big Dog and Junior for them joining us, and Paul, obviously, and Holson. That was an incredible show. We knocked it out of the park, y'all did. We got 200 people live, like, the whole time. Um, just, it, it was amazing. We're definitely going to have those. It's going to be, like, a special feature show. Should be on the – 103. Wow, 103. 104. Wow. Like, wow. Y'all, y'all, this is right. crazy. So uh, much love, much appreciation. <laughs> like, <laughs> I I never would have expected this. I mean, what were we doing? Like, if we had 40 people live a month ago, we thought that was just the, like, <laughs> greatest thing ever. 100 Canes fans, man. We're ready for August 24th, y'all. <laughs> I cannot wait for some football. So what we're gonna kind of do, I think I've got we got 106 people in the chat. I didn't get a chance. Oh, no. let, let Holson finish. But that. yeah, I'm sorry, Holson. I told you. Go ahead. Um, based on what's been brought to us as far as like the the, the evidence of the running back position, um, I know DJ Dallas is a guy that a lot of people like. I know that DJ Dallas is a guy that um, he's dynamic, and we didn't really get a chance to see the best DJ Dallas. Uh, because even DJ Dallas at two two thirty still almost ran for a thousand yards. Yeah. Um, so I could only imagine DJ Dallas now back. You know, he got back down to one eighty seven about a month into the, the David Feely uh, strength and conditioning program, and then he built back up his muscle to get to two twenty properly. Um, I'm excited to see that. But at this point, man, I, I those fumbles are becoming an issue for me. Yeah. And absolutely. fumbles come in bunches. Um, I, I'm not going to come on here and say that he shouldn't start. I'm not going to come on here and say pull a scholarship. I'm not on here to say that he shouldn't play uh, because he's a Miami Hurricane. And, and I'm not going to bash anybody that's on our roster for the most right. part. Um, if he can get that under control, he's our number one running back. But I like Cam Harris. I think Cam Harris is the future, and I think Cam Harris can average 1,000 yards a season, even behind a subpar offensive line. Definitely. Like, definitely. He's, a, he's the number six running back in the country coming out in 2018. It wasn't even like, for some unapparent reason, he was getting recruited, but not like crazy recruited. So I know he has something to prove. Um, this guy was at the Nike Open and making people look stupid and still wasn't getting, like, big boy offers like that. I, I just don't get it. But I'm happy that we got him. And I want to see more Cam Harris on the football field. I would love to see DJ Dallas start and have Cam Harris as that second and long or that third, third and long running back and have Robert Burns if he could stay healthy. Yes. He could stay healthy. Yeah. As our third – a third down short yard is back. And lastly, I'm going to say this so that we can continue for time purposes because we're not going to have a three-hour show like we did no. last night. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know if we could do 
three, you know, if we could do six hours worth of K's, I mean, I could do 10 hours, but we got to be respectful <laughs> to everyone else. Um, Lorenzo Lingard will be an amazing second half of the season, late season oh, yeah. addition Absolutely. to this running back core. I'm Absolutely. telling you guys right now, FIU, Louisville, Duke, and Clemson, oh, man. I'm going to have to deal with, y'all going to have to deal with number 22, Robert Burns, and number one, uh, Lorenzo Lingard. Oh, and I think that the only person I could see not having 500 yards or more would probably be Robert Burns because I think he may get like two or three garbage touchdowns, maybe four. Um, but at the same time, Lorenzo I think, could probably even hit 500 rushing yards just off of those four games because I think he's going to catch everybody off guard. And he'll have fresh legs. That's a big thing. Like Cam Harris did last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He came in late towards the end of the season due to DJ's fumbling yes. and his own hard work. And it was like, whoa, where has this guy been all season? <laughs> yeah. You know, like the wheel route against Virginia Tech was a was a beautiful. Uh even had some flashes in the Georgia Tech game. Uh, Pittsburgh was nice to see him come home and do some pretty good things. So uh, I'm excited. I think it's a four man uh stable and i just want us to put the star system on the football field i want to see the production these guys did in high school transition to them actually doing it at the university of miami right and that's something we'll talk more about later yeah yeah and 120 people in the live and we're 20 minutes in y'all are killing it i appreciate it so much i'm gonna be sure to keep watching that chat so we're gonna do a lot more question answer in this show because it's frankly we all can get to it there's not five of us so uh just throw up your questions any comments discussion stuff you want to talk about in the chat down below any news you think is relevant and i'm going to try to pick it out with paul and wholesome one we'll highlight it you'll see it down on the screen we'll be discussing it each for one of us so do also an at uh which person you want to discuss it first and uh we'll make sure to direct it that way so uh just keep blowing it up like we're not ignoring y'all in the chat you are definitely part of it sometimes we get on our topics we just keep going but there's three of us we're keeping an eye out so be throwing down your questions comments down there um the next thing i think that i want to talk about before we see any uh while we're watching for some question comments is the d line man you know we had nesta go down but to hear our coach at D line talk about the way that he did and the men stepping up too deep and the competition that they're doing there is just great to hear. And, but yes. yet he's still demanding even more. Like he's Absolutely. talking about Hill and saying, "Oh yeah, you know he's got some pretty good skills, but um, he he can have better stamina and endurance." You know, Absolutely. like he's not in this perfect shit. Like Hill, who's been destroying us. That's great to see to keep these guys at the highest of all standards. And another thing that I do want to note, which was interesting, is Scott Patrum could be a sixth-year guy, if I correctly understood from the interview. I don't know if you guys caught on to that, which would be huge for the Canes to have six him. Years? Yeah, but you see, not a lot of players stick around for six years because it's – what's the word for it? it? By that time, you want to go to the draft. It's You don't see that a lot in college football, guys, sticking around for the six-year um, – you know, there's a certain point where your body can only take so much at the college level. You know, I think Scott Patchen has the ability to get a chance to compete at a camp in the NFL. I'm not going to say he deserves a roster spot right now. We're going to see more senior year, but you don't want to stick around college football for six years. You're going to be 24. You know, like there's Jared Willis situations. They don't happen a lot. Right. And you see what happened with him as far as in the draft, they used that against him. Exactly. Exactly. The fact that he was 24, he should have been making those plays because he's going up against 18, 19, and 20 year old guys. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I think that Scott Patchett, uh, actually Anthony Chicolo, but at the same time, he'll be able to play in a 4 3, and he had a lot of injuries. Uh, he's even wearing 71, but this is to honor Scott's dad instead of Emily, who all wore 71 here <laughs> also. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, dog, uh, I'm excited for him because it's a guy who, when I turned on the film, come out of, what is he, class of 15 or 16? I want to say 15. 
he he's that old. Yeah, because he was with 14. Kyrie St. Louis, who just graduated. And yeah. well, yeah, yeah, he was fifteen. Um, and Scott Patchen's film, like him flying, his first step was amazing coming out of high school. And then the same thing I think happened again uh, when I went and watched the practice uh, this past that last Monday. He was flying off the ball. Like his first two steps are amazing, um, but he needs to be able. And the health is something you can't control. I tore my hamstring twice. It's just one of those things that it it, it beats you up inside. It's, it's something you can't control. You kind of got to like pray against it, and then try to do work help you not to become injury prone. Um, but his have been like freak accident, ACL, MCL type things. Um, but Scott, Scott is a consistent professional. Uh, he roots for all his players. High motor guy. And that's another thing. You could you could have all these injuries, quit, and then take a free scholarship. You know. Yeah. But Scott yeah. isn't that type of guy. Right. He still is a. When I go back and watch film, when he got in with that second defensive line, like he wasn't making a whole bunch of plays, but you could see like nineteen running his ass to that football or him like coming in as an assistant tackler and things of that nature. Like his assist tackles were pretty high last season. And the same things will probably happen this year. He would just be the guy to go make the plays. Um, as far as the other defense alignment, I like this coach. But I really do. He sounds like a player's coach. Yeah. He knows all of our players' names. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's something that people look over. But the fact that he was able to talk about every single guy on the roster, even yeah. the three freshmen, yes, and, and you know, talking about the three freshmen, the two from New York and the one from Georgia, uh, to come here and that they're doing good on scout team means that he's keeping an ear and an eye out for those guys too, yeah, because their families watch practice film too, their families, you know, and 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 people who like them, friends and such, want to hear about them too, and they were. You know, our last couple opportunities at defensive line. So people who follow recruiting would love to hear about him also. Those three also. Um, and it, it meant a lot for me to hear him say that, that mm -hmm. they're doing good against the threes and scout team and twos sometimes. Losing Nesta was huge. Yeah. But Cozy Luruka has flashed. Well, Chicago and Luruka flashing. Jordan Miller flashing, John Ford kind of turning the corner, but hasn't really turned the corner. But at the same time, this coach is holding them to a higher standard. He's like, oh, yeah. yeah, they're doing good, but they could do a lot better. Right. Um, and a lot of the answers about Trevon Hill were answered as far as him not really being able to go, you know, 110% because he's been battling the conditions. Yep. Mm -hmm. First of all, Miami Heat is something that you can't. You can't practice. You could you could yeah. go in a sauna yeah. and do conditioning in the sauna, and it still won't be the same when you go out there in Miami. Sun, right. You know, um, and that was a big thing. A lot of people were nervous about us spending too much time in the Carol Sulphur and not going out there and practicing in our heat. Right. But as you can see, we've been doing a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, he had to try to complete two classes, two classes in a summer session. To graduate from Virginia Tech. He did. He was it. able to do that and still didn't have much time to work out because he was focusing on getting through those classes. So he's been, you know, practicing through the conditioning and hadn't really had an opportunity to spend time with Coach Feely. Uh, so it, it's nice to hear about it. Uh, it was kind of a little scary to hear about Gregory Russo's back injury. Yeah. Because yeah. Back, back injuries never really get better. You know, even after surgery, people's backs never really get better, you know. <laughs> uh, so he said it's just just something, you know, about being six foot eight that yeah. comes with, you know, having tight backs. You know, I'm sorry, I'm 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 I'm not six to eight. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, I do have a gut, so I do know that, like, that has an issue with the back situation. <laughs> but um, <laughs> besides that, I think it's great. I think this, this unit – has the ability to be the best in the country, but I'm waiting for them to prove it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'm not going to give them the best defensive line in the country uh, label because right. a lot of our players 
or inexperienced or low stats. So they must go out there and prove it. Yeah. Very well yeah. said. Very well said. Paul, anything to add to that? You want to go to the next yeah, question? Yeah. One thing I want to add, um, since Todd Stroud was brought up, one thing I like about this coach in particular, he loves the sport of football, and he doesn't have his own agenda. He's here at Miami to stay. Coach Jeff mm -hmm. Simpson, um, mm -hmm. Craig Lizgowski, they both had their own, own agenda. They knew what their plan was at Miami and what how to get to where they wanted to be. They used Miami as a, you know, place Project to house. grow. Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. Build their resume. I think Stroud's here to develop players. He likes what Coach Diaz is doing. He was with Coach Diaz at NC State. Not to mention he coached three first-rounders at NC State that he recruited and developed. Hey, he's got a very good resume. I'm excited to see. I, I think our defensive line is going to take – what's the word for it? They're going to just take off from where they're the next last. level, man. They're yeah. not going to regress. Oh, you they're mean like takeover game. games? You think they're going to exactly. take over games? Okay. Exactly. Like dominate. Exactly. And um, one thing about Scott Patchen that whole someone did mention, in high school he was a four-star recruit. I don't know if a lot of people remember that. He wasn't a three-star under the radar guy. This was like an Under Armour All-American um, type player when he committed to Miami everybody was very excited and he was plagued by injuries guys okay the kid was playing tight end when Kuligowski was here coaching defensive lines we needed someone to step up at tight end he'd switch and converted positions during that season now he's gonna he's has great opportunity to succeed this season and I think our defensive line they're not the best in the country obviously until proven against Clemson and Florida but we're very talented and we can match up with everyone but Coach Stroud said it best, guys. It's not what your first team can do. It's what your second team and your third team can do. Can they he's going to use 10 team? guys. He said he's going to use 10 guys in rotation. Oh, yeah, I believe it. And he's got oh, 10 bro. guys. He means 10 guys at home. It's because numbers are not the same when you travel. Only okay. a certain amount of players can be a part of the travel squad, which is why Manny Diaz said some people are going to get on the train and some people are not going to get on the train. Yeah. Uh, that's where you have your issues as far as like freshmen getting in on away games, which is why they say make the travel team. Because when we go out and we wear white, everyone isn't going to be able to make the travel squad. That's why they have people play special teams. That's why they have them on uh, field goal block or field goal protection, punt and kick, those type of things. Or enough or to become part of the second team, the two deep, so that you can make the travel squad. Because every player is not going to be able to go to the Orlando game or a UNC game. Now, when it comes to your FIUs, when it comes to your Dukes, you but know. Cookmans. Yeah, your Central Michigan, stuff like that. Louis. Then you'll be able yeah. that's when you'll be able to eat. Uh, because they do a lot of stunting. And a lot, a lot of um, pass rush is going to be into this defense because it's a 4-2-5 attack. That's why he means it has to be super, super deep, um, you know, because you have your starting four, your backup four, which is eight, and then the ten would be two guys that can swing at defensive tackle or defensive end. That's what he means by ten deep. Uh, but you could go at least like 12 or 14 deep at home because there's no travel. Everyone can make the, the, the home game. Interesting thought someone threw up in the comments before. Special teams. Is this going to be more of a this year, oh, I hope they get the job done, or potential, like, lethal weapon that we can use? What do you guys think? Like, how much of a jump are we going to have in special teams? I can answer that question off the bat. Um, Bubba Baxa, I do not feel confident as him as a kicker. I don't care if he kicks 60 yards in practice. Until he can make big-time field goals during the game, then my confidence will go up. But this kid was shaky. Throughout, he was not consistent at all during last season. Going into the spring, he missed like 24-yard field goals. I don't have confidence until he proves me during the game. And I got to see Lou Headley during the game as well. Zach Beagles, according to Mark Rick, was punting amazing during practice. But during the game, he got the yips. I got to see it to believe it. I got to gain my confidence. You know, we'll see what happens game one under the lights in a big-time um, game in front of a lot of people. The whole world's literally going to be watching. <laughs> so, Holson, your thoughts? Uh, I agree to a certain extent. Uh, when it comes to Bubba Baxa, um, you know, practice is one thing, game is another, but he hasn't missed one yet. 
uh, like even in the scrimmage, he was two of two. When we were there, he was he was two of two plus fifty. Right. Um, so so I have a little bit more confidence in him. Because I think sometimes people realize, okay, I had a bad I had a bad season. He wasn't like the other guy feels who had a bad season, went in the went in the slumps, and then just quit football altogether because of all the backlash that happened. This guy stood in the paint and said, "Yeah, I had a pretty bad." Freshman year. Freshman year. Freshman kick. kicker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a freshman. So it takes time for players to develop. And then we had nobody. And kickers, freshmen should not play. Let's let's just get this understood. That's the fault of the development of coaches. If freshmen go out there and play things, amazing or NFL players waiting to go straight to the NFL. If you have developmental freshmen out there, that means that the lack of actual recruitment and development at that. So we were horrible at bringing in a kicker, which is why Bubba Baxter had to play last year. Uh, it was good for him to get some experience, but at the same time, we should never have to depend on freshmen at the University right. of Miami. You shouldn't yeah. have to. Yeah. And got it under his skin. He went through it. He got through it. And he's come back uh uh to try to to try to take a take a stand against right. what he did last year. You know, I don't think anything could shake him, but at the same time, I don't think he's ever played American football. I don't mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I can't you learned the he's sport ever played from American Madden. football. <laughs> so and you know, it's different when you're playing against a team and there's 60 to 80,000 people there. Right. You know, if special teams was an issue last year, so that means a lot of people are going to be on their ass so that they do better this yeah. year than they did last year. Uh, but that's only two phases. I think our kick and punt return is going to, especially if we get Nigel oh, yeah. Bethel back there, someone oh, that could just gosh. focus in on just being a punt returner or yeah. kick returner. Uh, oh, okay, no, Lewis Headley did play Juco American football. Okay, okay, I didn't know that. That That's why I said I don't know if he did or not. Um, and Jeff Thomas having that ability to be a punt returner again and the coach letting him be it as opposed to him having to fight back and forth with Coach Mark Rich, letting him be a punt returner, I think that's going to be huge for the University of Miami also. We need at least five to eight special Teams touchdowns this year. Yes, yes. Five to eight. Five to eight. Whether that's punt, kick, uh, blocked punt, block kick, right. scoop and score, we need five to eight. It would be a lot to ask for more because of the fact that they moved the kick, the kickoff up. I yeah, guess, you know, so it'll be tough for that. And punt return, it's a lot of risk in punt return because we could be. In a big time point in the game, and one or two things could happen. He could drop the punt, pick it up and score, or he could get the punt and and get stripped. You know, a lot of those things happen in, in the punt, especially with a young team, uh, especially a young returner. So those type of things we have to really, really think about. But I think if we just let Nigel Bethel focus 100% on returns, that's saving legs, fresh legs out there, and a speedster that can fly on special teams. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I don't want to have to put Jeff Thomas in danger on special teams. Being the elite talent that he is for us on offense, we know he can return them. We know he can. But it'd be great, as you said, to have multiple guys to be able to carry in five to eight throughout the whole season. It would be huge. I mean, teams would have to prepare. I remember when Miami had to prepare specifically for Ohio State many years back because of the threat that they were on special teams. Imagine right. what you have to do for a whole week. You practice just special teams. That means you don't have enough time, to, as much time, to practice all the other aspects of the football team. As many opportunities as you have on the field to be more lethal surprise, you got to use them. And seeing just the DS era cover all aspects of football this time and not just focusing on one, like, oh, we're good here, this will be fine, it'll pull us through, is great to see because competition – it's literally to the punting level. I mean, it's just like incredible 
and <laughs> they, they're putting them to work. Like they, these guys have to be in shape. They don't care if they're just kicking footballs. And I think that's kind of to the credit of what they're talking about backs in his foot, like hitting 60 yards with that's a cannon of a foot. Like <laughs> that is some work that you've been putting in. And usually you don't look at your kickers and you're like, Oh my gosh, this guy, but you look at these guys and they look like they can tackle someone to the ground if right. it need be. And that's exciting to see. You're a football player. That's what you do for your career. You best be in best shape that you can be. And this, this whole staff is taking that to another level, just another level. What do you think, you know, Diaz comments on, you know, he seemed kind of disappointed, honestly, today. You know, he's yeah, talking about, like, a lot of mistakes down, and all man. of that. Yeah. I don't know what they did today, but uh, mm-hmm. the excitement, the only coach to me that looked like his guys had a pretty good day was the defensive line coach. Yeah. Everybody yeah, else. Strong the wide up. receiver, the wide receiver yeah. coach oh, looked golly. down. <laughs> Manny Diaz looked down. Uh Butch Berry looked down. Like, everybody was just like, yeah, well, you know. And one of those things about having a bad practice is you, you can't let a bad practice turn into a bad week. Exactly. Yeah. So let's yeah. just let – the biggest thing you don't want to do is, is, of course, let it turn to a bad week. But if you have a bad period, then let the period stay in that period. Don't let the bad period turn into a bad practice. Yeah. But since it turned into a bad practice – we cannot let it continue on day and day and day because we're two weeks away from lining it up from Florida. Mm-hmm. Like, what is it, 20 days away? What's today? Oh, yeah, we're 17? 18, 18 days away. Wow. Wow. That's almost two. And we can't even – really 17 because you can't count game day because it's just all talk on game day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're 17, two, two and a half weeks away from lining it up with the Florida Gators. And I don't know if anybody else has watched their stuff, but their coach looks just as nervous. Yeah. And they just had a oh, whole, whole bunch oh, of people yeah. get kicked off Absolutely. the team. So this game yeah. is going to be a lot closer than mm-hmm. a lot of people think, if not a blowout in my family's favor. Man, this is why I hate these first games out the gate, man. You're all, you got to – it's like you come in and you don't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. You know, like literally LSU before the game was like, yeah, there's a good chance we lose to Miami. Miami before the game overconfident you know like you don't know what team's gonna show up you can have a really good game and a really bad game you just don't know what's gonna happen it's your first game as a team you don't know if that freshman sitting next to you is gonna have an amari cooper type freshman season you don't know what's gonna happen you can play as someone out there and they can you can they can have an awful season starting that game mm-hmm. and then the backups have great seasons you just don't know what's going to happen game one man you don't know mate hey god forbid your starting quarterback whoever it is could get injured first three snaps in and it won't even matter it's next guy up you just don't know but then again hey Jameis winston was it against Ole miss was it who was it against florida state played in the pittsburgh was it pittsburgh and the yeah. story of james winston the heisman trophy run took over Hey, who knows? Redshirt freshman. Same situation as Jaron Williams. Jaron Williams for Heisman? In Orlando. I think the game was in Orlando too, guys. No, it was at Pitt. It was at Pitt. Because that was that was the game that I got introduced to Aaron Donald, and I was like, who is this guy? (laughs) He was the only person keeping them in that game. But Rapist Winston and the Rape Boys took a real good job at uh, Pittman, so – Man, Yo, Coach Diaz's first game. I got an interesting, a little, a little off top, but a little interesting one. So the hurricane warning symbol I saw was going to be copyrighted by Miami for use on their jerseys and stuff, their products. But I went to thinking and said, Diaz has been talking about an offensive, some sort of sideline gig. What if it has to do with a hurricane warning flag? Like, what if that's what they're trying to copyright? Like, I'm trying to see because I don't know if uh, – do you think it's going to be more of a uniform thing? Like, what would your guess be for an offensive gig with that uh, in mind? I mean, I personally I, – I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I love the turnover chain. I don't think we need to replicate it, honestly. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I would have done – because touchdowns can become a bit much, like – if we're that desperate that we got to celebrate touchdowns, that yeah. shit is dumb. Like, it, it shouldn't be about, oh, you get a chain because you freaking scored a touchdown. That's what we're paying you $50,000 yeah. a 
to Mr. To do. <laughs> Catch the damn fall and put and pancake somebody as an offensive lineman. That's what we're telling you and coaching you to do. We shouldn't have to motivate you with a prop to do your damn job. You're right. And it's sad that we have to do that. Defensively, mm-hmm. you can force a turnover. You're f- that's different. But to tell me that I should award a wide receiver a damn chain or a flag because he scored a touchdown, that's BS. If it happens, I'll be happy for him. It might look cool. But that that just should be something that they're supposed to do. Don't look like it's your first time there, my coach said in the end zone. So don't over-celebrate it. Don't under-celebrate it. You're right. <laughs> You're an offense. Well, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that because as the Miami Hurricanes, you're supposed to show out. And if they don't like it, you tell them kiss your damn ass. Right. That's what you're supposed to do as a Miami Hurricane. I – always hated coaches that say that bull crap. Act like you've been there. I wish I would have scored a touchdown in my football career. I got plenty of sacks and I definitely celebrated after every one of them. Why? Because I went through the hard work of training to be in a position to make the play and to get the sack. And I'm going to be happy while I get the sack. And if I would have scored, I would have got a 50-yard penalty because I would have been pop locked and break Breaking in the damn. He's breaking the internet. He's talking so happy. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what's your thoughts? What if we used to be only on man. special teams? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much. 150, 150 guys. I This is incredible. You, and y'all are bowed up the chat. I appreciate it so much. Be sure to hit this special like button and check out these guys' channel below. I have the links right there. Subscribe to all of them. They put in great content every single week. Miami Hurricanes Talk and Wholesome One You Family. Be sure to check them out. If you haven't subscribed, I don't know what the heck you're doing. Plug right here, you know. Uh, also, use that super chat, you know. It helps out the, the, all, all of them as well. Um, what about a, maybe a special teams prop? Wholesome, you so much against. What are the special team scores? How about that? Are you going to be happy with that? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I would love for them to score, but – Every time Lewis Headley boots one inside the 20, we're going to put a damn ch- chain on him. Hey, here's a boot <laughs> chain. Good job. Are we going to have, have five chains for the offensive line for pancaking somebody? Here's a chain diamond oh out in pancakes. Like, it, it can become a him. bit much. I'm, it can I'm become a you. bit much. I don't think it'll be a permanent thing. I, I hope it won't be. I'm with you on that. But DSM, now, like, anything gets them excited, you know? Now, I will say the closer put up something that said they should get a prop at 50 yards plus. That, okay, I get that. Like, if you, now that would be a good motivator because it would make players want to break tackles and keep right. going all the way to the end zone. Right. Now, if it's 50 or 60 yards plus, give them a chain. But I'm not giving Robert Burns no damn chain for a one yard touchdown. <laughs> That's, yeah, hell no. Oh, man. Oh, man. It is, uh, hell to the no. That's bull. Paul, I I've see, heard your thoughts. I the the hurricane flag, the the two little flags. I can see them as stickers that they put on helmets. I can mm-hmm. picture that. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I, I I see that happening. All uniforms. Oh man, I see that. Oh yeah, putting stickers on the helmets. I 100% agree with wholesome one that you know you have a turnover chain. You, then the offense is going to get jealous. You know that you can't like just have like a sideshow going on. Um, on the sidelines, you know, like, oh, I scored a touchdown. Here we go. It's like it, it gets annoying, especially when you're losing. Um, last season, the turnover chain didn't have the same essence as it did the first season because we were winning. Whoa, 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 whoa. I wouldn't say that much. Oh, I would. The turnover, I would. The turnover chain Florida State game is what pulled us back into that game because it brought the energy back into it. It brought the energy right. for the offense to go out there and make plays off of that. Now, saying. I could understand what you mean, like Virginia right, or right. That's like what I'm getting Duke. To. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. That's what I'm getting to. Like, listen, I mean, I know we beat Virginia Tech, but like Shaq Quarterman on the sideline with the turnover chain, like, dude, we, we're seven and five, dude. Like, <laughs> like this isn't Miami to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, if we were 10 and if we were like in the top five kicking ass, like, yeah, man, that that's huge. But man, like, we got to win if we're going to rep that chain. You know, it comes both ways. I feel like. But at the same time, if it's going to be a part of the program, it has to be a part of the program at all times. 
whether we're fucking seven and six, nine and four, ten and three, eleven and one. If you're going to say that the turnover chain is a Miami thing, and because Manny Diaz says he wants it to be similar to the Virginia Tech bucket crap that they've been doing for fifty years, <laughs> my thing is stop giving it to damn recruits. With it. Yeah, stop okay. putting the yeah. chain. Oh yeah, my god, I hate that. Stop putting the chain on these kids that haven't even put on the dotted line. You're giving it mm-hmm. to a damn quarterback who will never wear it in his career at the University of Miami. Stop <laughs> putting the chain on people who have not deserved it. Trajan Bandy against Notre Dame went and made that interception. He deserved the chain. Just a guy on a visit shouldn't get a Dick chain Garcia just because he great. wants to. He wants to wear the uniform. Exactly. A guy who probably won't even sign to University of Miami on a visit with his high school gets to put on the damn chain and take pictures. That Mm -hmm. shit out of here, man. Earn the opportunity to put on our goddamn chain. That that irks my spirit. I'm with you. You got to put some respect on it because, like you said, we still have to keep it for a 7-9 season because what does it do? It puts a reminder for the greats before that, hey – we had a 10-win season with this. We actually made this worth something. Keep it worth something. Don't disrespect the, the chain. Don't disrespect you. We expect greater. We expect greatness every season. And you wearing that chain and, you know, program being nowhere is a reminder, a harsh reminder of this is what you've come to. Change it. Now we expect greater things at Miami. What are the fans saying? Any questions uh, from uh, people in the chat? Man, people are going crazy about the chain. Everyone's saying do it. Some people don't. Some people love it. Some people off. Everyone's up all over the place. But I'm looking for some questions and, uh, uh, from the fans, y'all. Throw up some questions. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and start our yeah. Q&A, guys. So, yeah. So, yeah, because we're, we're at the like, like 10-minute mark towards the end of the show. So, go ahead and throw your Q&As. Yeah, but the one thing that I talked uh, saw someone throw up was just the cornerback room was interesting. Uh, how we felt about that and who is going to be starting with Bandy. We've talked about it before, but uh, there's been some moves going on. Just in the secondary, I think we should talk about more with Gervin Hall and all that. Who would you guys think is potentially a sneak starter now? Do you think is someone's edging someone out differently than you thought otherwise before? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I think Derek absolutely. Smith is really pushing – Amari Carter as that starter yep. uh, for the for strong safety. I also have seen some some big time plays from Gilbert Fryson. I don't know if he'll be able to take the job from Robert Finley uh, from from Romeo Finley, but mm-hmm. at the same time he'll be able to push him. And if we're going to create competition, it needs to be at every single position. Um, safety, I think Gervin Hall has it on lock, but to have Bubba Bolden yes, on the plane tonight, finally. Yes. Ready to be for practice tomorrow. Yep, yep. That's Why that's big time. Yes, that's big time. Mm-hmm. And 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 that that means a lot uh, because he was the very last piece of transfer portal U to come into the University of Miami. A lot of people didn't think that they stop and it was going to be an issue, but to have him and Avery Huff come within like what six days of each other. Mm-hmm. And they're late, and they're important, but they're more important for depth as far as like key starters, you know. Um, and second half, second later into the season, kind of sneaks too. I think Bubba Bowden will probably come make at least like maybe week three, like week maybe three. maybe like halftime UNC. They'll throw him out there and see. But the big thing about him is, I don't know if it's legal or if they did it right. But as far as communicating the defense to someone who isn't on campus, you know, like, were they able to email okay. him the playbook? Did they FaceTime yeah. and go over the playbook together? Did they talk on the phone? And those things do happen, uh, but you're supposed to only do it when they're on your campus. So hopefully he's had a lot of opportunities to look at the playbook, get, get an understanding. And, you know, some people think safety is simple. It's not a simple process. You're the, you got to make sure even like everyone's lined up and then getting the communication part of it. If you're at our free safety, you have to convey a message to a corner, a hand signal, and everybody has to have the same hand signal understood. It, it takes repetition to do that. It would be hard for you to just come in 
you know, two weeks in and do the same thing with first team, something that Gervin Hall has been doing since spring. Um, so when it comes to safety, I think it's kind of it's kind of dead in the water. Paul? Paul, someone said exactly what I was going to say. Derek Smith is really pushing um, for Amari Carter for that starting role. It's been a nice surprise um, coming into this uh, fall camp. I – I know Robert Knowles has uh, led the team in total tackles. I know he always gets constant praises from the coaching staff. This has been going on for a while. I think it's safe to say he is a practice player, Um, but I don't know. We'll see what happens week one and throughout this season. Um, I don't know. I think he gets booed if he gets on the field. He's been in college football for, like, what, four or five years by now? I mean, something's got to click. Man, something's got to click. I think he was like class of 2014, dog. And it's the same coaching staff, too. It's not like it's different coaching staff. Bro, but I watch him in the one-on-ones and stuff and some film, and the guys are destroying him. Like, he's behind him three yards. I don't get it. Like, they're talking about – and I'm like, this guy has – like, he's on the wheels. Every play – it wasn't just one play I picked him out. Like, every dang play. I didn't have to see, you know, his hair or his jersey number, anything who it was. I'm looking. I'm like, oh, the guy that's three yards behind him that's not freshman you know so and so that's robert knows every play maybe it's just one bad practice i don't know if some people say good practice guy or something like that i don't know why when the camera's off they if they just want to help him out because he's a scholarship kid motivate him or what but like i i don't see it i'm sorry i don't want him on the field i don't see it i don't get it i i don't um i don't, I don't know be a great about. special teams guy i would love to see him on special teams I want to see uh, every scholarship player, but like I don't see him good in coverage. No, right. Paul, nine oh four Kane has an interesting question for you. His question was, "How do you feel about Robert Knowles being moved to linebacker to help with depth issues?" Listen, if Robert Knowles <laughs> is moved to linebacker to deal with injuries because of depth if issues, that is the panic. Button. Remember this, guys. If it happens, that is when the ship has sank, and there is no such thing as TNF. <laughs> oh that my is, god! Like we're gonna be asking Mark Rick to come back to Miami because that's how bad this season went. <laughs> no. No. Oh gosh! Knocked out of the park. Just, just to be more in perspective on that, just to be more realistic. Besides that answer, if he was, if he was going to already be moved, to, if he, they wanted him at linebacker, they would have already moved him at linebacker. He's a yeah. senior. There's a reason why they keep him at safety. All right, they don't mm-hmm. want to confuse him anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I want you there on that. Somebody threw up an interesting mm-hmm. one. Who thinks our? Ch- what are our chances of blowing out the Florida Gators? Are I don't like that comment. Our chances of blowing out the Gators. Personally? I say 40%. 40%. 40%. I would say this. Franks has to have INTs, turnovers. There needs to be fun. We need to win the turnover margin like three to zero. Um, we need to, yeah, we need to win the turnover margin if that's if it's gonna be a blowout. Pick a couple pick sixes, like out of nowhere. Kind of what LSU did in Miami. It would be a huge momentum swing by Florida Gators problems, like messing things up. It won't be – I don't see it happening where Miami goes three perfect drives and that's it. Like that just happened because we're just, you know, so improved. It's going to be some big momentum swing. That turnover chain breaking out, a pick six, it's definitely – but I'm with you guys. We have our Havoc ratings up through the roof. We're reloading on defense um, 40% to blow them out because – I don't know if they're going to be ready. Like that Florida Gators team who just laughs every time they hear Miami. What are they going to be doing when they're down 21 0 halftime? Like, what? Yeah. How do you change that mentality if that's been your whole mentality all offseason preparing for this week's year? That's hey, why, by the like, way, guys, we just hit our all time high 163. Never on the show we've ever hit that. Let's go. Let's go. Just Man. Oh, and my thank, thank God. Thank for watching because they're the ones yes. that made this happen. Yes, yes. Pretty Thank you guys. all so much. So much. Appreciate it so much. 163. Right after yesterday, we had a three-hour show. Y'all coming mm. up every single day. Much love to you all, especially the ones that are in the comments, engaging with us. 
asking questions and commenting, everyone that donated. And be sure to hit the thumbs up. It really helps the channel and the show out, throws it up on YouTube and stuff. Guys, I just thank you guys for being the faithful, man. I, I, I don't know what else to say. And I got a question um, that Jay, the UFAM Blaze, has been trying to get our attention on, and I was waiting for someone to just notice. Um, what's the game plan against Florida? And I would love to hear everyone's answers. Okay. Pulse against the defense. Against the Pulse defense. Pulse got Do you want me to go first? Or Ant go first. Anton, I would no, no, no. I want to hear Anton. Let's, let's hear that football IQ. Anton. Against the Florida Gators, defense or offense, does he want to know? He said, so you were saying against the defense, right? Miami offense against defense plan, right? Right. And then, yes. and then again, again, Miami's defense against Florida's offense. Let's hear this football IQ. Go ahead, Anton. Look, I don't think we're going to – if we play Smash Mouth SEC football, I'm going to say it's LSU all over again. I'm just like – I'm going to be scared. I want us to be balling. I want these – I want them to roll the dice. I want Diaz to show the new Miami with Dan Enos is rolling the dice, like, beginning. And to keep trusting with it. Not like, oh, it didn't work out this first two plays. Let's run the ball on third and ten. No, 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 no. We can't the, – the run game has to be not the first thing we establish. It's got to be the passing game because they're not prepared for that. We have a new quarterback in place. Our offense was not firing on all cylinders last year. But we've been working this whole offseason. If we can get our passing game going and get one, one deep ball pass, it's going to, like, just knock the Florida Gators defense, like, what's going on? And that's when you start your Cam Harris, your, you know, just the whole, like you said, the squad, the running back squad. I mean, all of them horses running through them. If you get that with one offensive drive, that's going to really shake up the defense. Transitioning over to Miami defense going against Florida Gators offense, I, I think it's putting pressure on Felipe Franks. Felipe Franks will shine if he's got a clean pocket. He will shine. I'm sorry. He will. He's not a great quarterback. That is just all over there. But when he has a pocket, he was going to shine. He can make really nice passes. We can see that from all of them that I've seen. It's just, you know, he's going to fry up the secondary. But our front seven is scary. And if it is as advertised, He's going to be knocked around a good bit. If he doesn't have enough time, he's going to make mistakes. That's going to cause turnovers. That's going to give us momentum. And that's got to be the game plan. The game plan cannot be safe for the Florida Gators. If we play safe, we lost the game already. It's got to be roll all the dice out there and keep rolling them until it works. If you truly are a Havoc rating team on defense and then Dan Eno's the new Miami offense. I'm, I'm actually thoroughly impressed. <laughs> Okay, um, let's let's talk Miami Hurricanes offense against the Florida Gators defense. Number one, their corners are good. Let's just let's just get that out there. Their cornerback, their two starting outside corners are good to great. It might be one of the better duos in the country. I'm not gonna go as far as say best, um, but they just lost their starting nickel. Um, the backup is a freshman. They're starting two brand new safeties. Um, the linebackers that played it, that played last year are all to a certain extent um, iffy. They can be attacked in coverage. Uh, they're young at defensive line. They're big, so they're going to want us to try to play hard eye formation, run Travis Homer instead of the middle like we did all last season. Uh, hopefully we don't do that crap first and second down. 21 dive, 22 dive, and then try to throw deep. Hopefully that doesn't work. Um, but the, the one of the keys that I'm going to see is can our offense attack these corners and safeties when they come out in cover two press, when they come out in man uh, cover two umbrella, can we hit those pockets where we can hold the safety and then throw it right over the top to Jeff Thomas? Or can we have uh, K.J. Osborne out of the slot a quick um, slant across the middle and have him be a possession receiver. Uh, and, and every now and again, after we try some dink and dunk with some run up the middle and come at them, because you got to attack them, meaning attack them deep and, and bring feature the run game also. Don't become a one-trick pony because if we go strictly pass, then they'll come out and we have to still be able to run the football. You have to be diverse. Um. 
attack their inexperienced players. Their linebackers, like I said, are very inexperienced. So we have great tight ends. So if we attack them with our tight ends, that can work for the first half. But then we got to start incorporating our shots against their tight ends and safeties and really, really get them to try to move backwards. Now you switch from cover two. Now you're going to cover to uh, mix in some man and really play backwards. And then that's when you start uh, doing some wide receiver screens and force their DBs to tackle the open field. And you block runs uh, even out of a really, really nice spread set uh, and get some line, offense alignment on the smaller linebackers. Now, the reverse, our defense against their offense, I, very, I agree with what you said as far as getting pressure. But there's, to me, we need pressure from the front four. We don't need to be as blitz happy this season. Because if you go back and watch the LSU game, and I know it'll be different, but it's the only SEC similar team that I can talk about. If we're if we're blitz happy against uh, experienced offensive coordinators, they'll have these hot routes, and it makes it hard uh, to attack hot routes because you can't cover the entire football field. It's really, really hard to cover all 55 yards across the field. Mm -hmm. So then you get your check downs, and now everyone has to come down and attack. And then they'll mix in, they'll spread us out, and then run straight up the middle like LSU did. So we have to be careful with um, showing one thing but being in another, and we have to stop doing those wholesale 11, the whole second team defense run out on the field. We can't do that crap no more. Um, you know, Robert knows it's okay if he's on the field for warm up. It's okay if he's on the field for special teams. But if he's out there as a um, starting safety or contributing safety, things will not look good. Uh, and we also, if we're going to incorporate some blitzes, he does not like blitzing in his face. So we need to blitz from the right side of the offense, meaning the left side of the defense. Because Missouri had, if you watch Missouri, Missouri and yes. Georgia, they blitzed him right up the middle and to the right side, sending nickel blitzes. And for us, that would be a striker blitz. Uh, they even mixed in things where the defensive line slants one way and the linebackers come across from, like, come over the top from where they are. And it really messes up uh, with Felipe Frank. But he will pick us apart if we give him a clean pocket. And even if we're not getting pressure but we have good coverage, he'll take off and get a first down. So we have to be very careful. This game plan needs to be perfect, and it needs to be executed uh, to the T. A couple of turnovers will really, really – and I, I mean not a turnover like Mike Pickney where it was an interception he decides to roll and, and, and point at his jock strap. A uh, pick six. We need – catch the ball – Take it to the end zone. Fumble recovery, scoop and score, or get us in really good, um, really really good field position. And lastly, special teams. I need us to see um, field goals. All our field goals need to be made, mm -hmm. and we oh, yeah. need we need at least one special teams touchdown, whether it's a kick return or a punt return. Uh, those would be my three keys in my game plan for the game. I think we're ready. Wholesome One is going to the Miami squad. He'll be in the booth and uh, will be coaching the Gator Miami game. And your score prediction is 35 to 3. Man, I'm fired up, bro. If we get that going, we're going to be screaming like the Notre Dame game, man. It's going to be a fireworks show, man. Paul, what are your thoughts? Man, I'll tell you what. Miami's game plan against this University of Florida defense, I wrote down – Six players. Okay? okay. You got your two best tight ends, Revan Jordan, Will Mallory. Your two best running backs, Cameron Harris, DJ Dallas. Your two best receivers, KJ Osborne, Jeff Thomas. Okay. You target those guys. I don't care how you do it, but you stick with those guys on offense and you don't give it to anyone else. You will win this football game by giving these six guys the football. Okay. Open up the run game with Cam Harris. Give it to DJ Dallas. Play pitch and catch. Utilize the tight ends with Brevin Jordan and Will Mallory. You don't have to go for the deep ball. 
Okay, you can throw seam routes down the middle every time. Mm-hmm. Jeff Thomas can be any receiver one on one. Okay, you can do run cross routes. We don't have to run a deep post. Okay, play pitch and catch with these six guys, and we will win the game. Okay, it doesn't have to be too conservative. It's a new offense, but stick with your veteran guys. Okay, they will win you this football game against this University of Florida defense, and they have a very good defensive back group. Very good, very scary. So it'll be a fun game. And defensively, I want us blitzing the shit out of Felipe Franks in this offensive line. Okay, this is a very inexperienced offensive line. We can even do a tornado blitz. We're running a four-two-five offense where we have, like you said, everyone blitzing from the left to right side. And and when the ref isn't looking, hit Felipe Franks late. The yes. hell with it. Get in his head. Rough Knock a molar ball. out. Knock a Rough molar him tip up. out. Make him remember this is a different game. He's never seen a defense like Manny Diaz is in the SEC. He's never seen the strike position. He's never seen blitz packages that Manny Diaz is going to bring. Rough well, Blake, 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 but yeah, we all know it's going to be. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, get what like you're saying. We get what you, we get what you mean. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Man, oh. Um, the only yeah. thing that I, I disagree with, I think we have to attack them deep, Paul. Reason okay. being, if I'm a defensive coordinator and I know for a fact that you're only throwing five to ten yard routes, we can rally and I can sit and cover three all day long and have one high safety just play over top and have a roving a roaming uh safety go down to the field side across with whoever you're dragging across and have my strong safety come down and take that drag away. Um and then just play umbrella coverage with one safety over the top and force everything in front of my defense and we rally to the football. If I know for a fact you attack me deep, it makes me have to really pay attention to what formation you're coming in, who's in the game, because I'm terrified of you throwing it deep. And then that's why Miami was so successful with our tight ends, because teams would play us uh, outside in because of the great wide receiver play. And then our tight ends would kill them over the middle because everyone's Mm -hmm. playing outside. Yep. Everyone's playing cover four. Everyone's playing cover two against us. And it leaves the seams open for our slots and tight end. So that's what I mean by as far we have to attack. I get what you mean as far as, you know, don't take chances to a certain extent. Right, right. Uh, we don't have to take chances. But I think if this is going to be the, the new Miami, we got to make and take chances. Yeah, yeah. Because because Mark Rick's Miami would just try to play the game. Let's stay close, keep it close, run the ball, play good defense, uh, and, you know, we'll come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll come out on top, guys. Just keep playing hard-nosed defense and play it close and make all your field goals. Old school football, that crap doesn't work anymore. Nick Saban, who is the most old school man on this planet, realized that he needs to attack teams with that spread, because they were kicking his ass in 2014 and 20, well, 2013, 2014, and somewhat 2015, with teams when he had 280-pound middle linebackers and still had fullbacks, and teams were spreading them out and messing their and, and kicking Alabama's ass on defense. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? I'm with you. I'm with you because so, if they know that the only chance we'll take is going to be a miss and a drop, exactly. They just tighten up that coverage. It's, I mean, it makes you so much more one dimensional and it gives everybody on the field so much more difficulties. And then those wide receivers don't catch those balls and then you got yourself a wrecked offense. Um, and but I think, go ahead. One thing I just wanted to say um, I think this is a must is win the turnover battle. I think if oh, Miami yeah. loses the turnover battle, we do not win this football game. That's just my little prediction, but I think yeah. that's how Florida's how, how Florida gets up. Man, their defense. I've seen their tapes. I've seen their videos. You know, every time they're down against LSU, Georgia, they come back because their defense freaking gets a 19, runs a pick six, or makes a big play. You know, and then their offense. All they need to do is give it for Ryan up the middle, and they score. That's how they move the ball. Their defense sets up the offense. It's a very good defense. You got to win the turnover margin. You cannot lose that part of the game especially for week zero. And I'm going to do some uh, little channel maintenance. First of all, huge shout out to Donnie Hudson and Buddy with din- the donations. $5 from Donnie, $2 from Buddy. I appreciate it so much, guys. It means a lot. Any dollar helps, and it's super encouraging to see 170 
three people live yeah. joining and encouraging us, throwing a thumbs up, talking, throwing stuff in the chat, donating. It just it this show couldn't be here without y'all. And this is a Kane family. And it's just it's amazing what has happened in a couple of months with this show. And I just want to give a huge shout out to everybody and, it's, and those that donated. Thank you guys so much with that. Um, 904 and Hurricane did an interesting uh, comment he's been asked and saying, uh, we love Jeff Thomas and KJ, but he's wondering if we're missing a true number one receiver like Amon Richards. I don't I think do. so. You know, was Amon – Paulson, do you think Amon Richards was a true number one receiver while he was at Miami? Okay. Yeah. Is Buck going to move up? Yeah, I can hear him that well. I, I, I think he – you said yeah, I, right? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Now? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Yeah, Paul can be our – Mark Paul uh, he his head out of his ass. Uh, that kid has all the tangible thing that, that you desire, size, speed, big playability. He, he, he that guy uh, to prove it on the football field. One on this roster, he, but I haven't heard anything from him this this fall. It's missing on us. Hopefully, Peyton, Peyton hopefully we made a time. little bit of news in, in the scrimmage, a little bit. Like I yeah. saw a couple that he made a couple of good. Uh, catches and such but i'm with you not as much noise like in spring but i think i think like spring ball i think he is our number one i don't, I don't see nothing wrong with him right yeah yeah and i think yeah i get what we're using kj in the slot so i get what he's saying as far as like the size a guy with the speed a guy that demands the number one ball you know like mm -hmm. yeah yeah but you don't Again, you don't want to be very one-dimensional with your players. Like, take the example of OBJ. What do teams do? They got double down on him. So that it gives you more options on the rest of the side of the field. So you're kind of asking yourself, like, you have that Jeff Thomas, like, OBJ essence-like player. But the, he may not seem like a number one when it comes to stats, but everybody on that defense sure dang knows they better cover him and cover him well because if they let him catch one ball, that's it. He's going to go off and ball out on you. And so it's kind of hard to debate of who's a number one when it comes to stat sheet versus production level. But you look at who's getting getting the heart, the best defensive player on them. That's their card called. And you know you have yourself what you want in a position to where if you're rotating guys on the number one wide receiver, he's not. He's clearly needs to be something done where someone needs to step up because it's got to be the best versus the best there. Yeah, and I think that's something that Miami's been missing, man, is having a number one receiver that's been healthy throughout the whole season. You know, look at Leonard Hankerson. Remember that season he had with Miami? I think it was either his junior or senior season. I mean, he went into Clemson and dominated that game in Death Valley, guys. I think Taj Boyd was quarterback as well. Do you guys remember that game I was referring to? I mean, Leonard Hankerson, man, that season was just nice. Had a great season and got him drafted in the third round, I believe, of the NFL draft that, um, that year. Yeah. Yeah, that was huge, huge pickup. Broke records, man. Broke records. And we got Alonzo in the chat. Appreciate it so much, him joining in. Uh, Zo, um, he's always been a supporter, and I uh, appreciate him and throwing up the chat. And also, um, man, just all the you family just been coming together from all over YouTube. Um, Coop been throwing up some love, and just it's, it's great to see all these – teams going together and he's been throwing us love and i just want to do a shout out if you guys love miami love college football and want some good content be sure to check all of those guys out because they're working really hard at what they do and they are just they earn your subscription man i promise you that all right. never it. and thanks everyone for joining the chat um joining the the video um taking part in the live chat guys we greatly appreciate it and uh, we're wrapping it up right guys Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're at yeah, one uh, hour and 20 yeah. minutes, but no, it went well. It was very good. It went oh, yeah, well, man. Great. We uh, <laughs> get it. everybody that comes into the chat, man, whether you made it in late, whether you rewatch it, or whether you were here from the beginning when we started uh, and pressed live, you know, at the beginning. We appreciate you guys every 
catching on it like 172 tonight. So we're, we're doing a great job. And like like uh, Anton said earlier, and like Paul talks about, and like I always talk about, um, when it comes to this University of Miami family, it isn't just about one channel. It isn't just about one collab. It's about all of us. You know, we bring some. Every single one of us brings something different to Absolutely. the table. And it's not about one against another. It's about us as the you family. And uh, we, we appreciate y'all. If you're here, make sure you um, make sure you all go and subscribe to just like everyone. Coach Coop, Alonzo1219. Uh, not the Shades guys. But uh, Miami Hurricanes Talk, Miami Hurricanes Time. Uh, Junior and the big dog, uh, it's like it's like ten of us, you know. <laughs> like, just go ahead and and subscribe, man, and uh, hit the like button. It means the world to us. We truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, I gotta get out of here. Uh, yeah. So y'all have a good one, man. Y'all be safe, and we'll see y'all on each and every one of our channels because we're doing daily uploads at this point. Because it's, yeah. it's, it's it's getting the crunch up. time, guys. Yes, sir. Seventeen, 17 days. days away. Seventeen days away, man. Like we always say, it's all about this you. Yes, sir. All about the you.